All right, now the fun part, the actual circuit bending. One thing to remember is don't rush. Anytime I've ever made a mistake, uh, circuit bending, such as drilling a hole in a wrong spot, or just any other myriad of problems, it's always because I was rushing. So resist the temptation and uh, to rush and just take your time and enjoy what we're going to do. This is a speak and read. This is very similar to the speak and spell and speak and math. They usually will just call these speaks for short because they're so similar. Now I've never actually bent a speak and read. I've done a speak and spell before. So this is going to be a learning experience for me too. We're just going to do some basic bends. You can spend as much time or as little time as you want on this project. Don't feel you need to follow just what I do. And in fact, that's what makes circuit bending fun is the uniqueness, finding your own bends. So let's get started. First, we're going to flip it over. I've got a new set of batteries in here and we're going to open up the back. All right, now we have the back off. There were two screws in the very back. I've put them in this clear plastic container just to keep track of them and any other parts we may take off. You can also use a speaker uh, because it's magnetic. You can just let the screws fall on the magnet. Um, for right now, I'll just keep them on the magnet, but you can choose which way you want to keep track of your parts. All right, now that we have the back off of the speak and spell, the first thing we want to do is take a picture of the circuit board. I've already done that and printed it out and have it here. And the reason we want to do this is as we go through the circuit board and find our bend points, I want to write them down so we can keep track of them. I'll probably just use letters. So if something over here made a good bend point with something over here, I would label this maybe A whatever was over here B and if there was one down here I would label it C and then that way we can keep track of okay A and B sounded good together and B and C sounded good together and so on and as we do this I'm also going to take notes either on this piece of paper or in my notebook of what type of control might work good whether it would be a toggle switch or potentiometer body contact things like that that way later it'll make our job easier when we go to solder all these points together. Now one of the first things I want to do before we get started and get too deep into this is install a reset switch like I mentioned earlier. So I have here a black normally closed momentary push button switch and what I'm going to do is install it in line with the batteries here. So later on, if the toy happens to lock up, we don't have to remove the batteries. All right, I've zoomed in a little here so we can see what I'm doing. This is the wire where I'm going to install the switch in line with. So I'm going to cut this wire. So now there's no possible way any electricity can be flowing from the batteries to the toy. Now, a little trick with this is we're going to have to strip back the insulation here on the end of these wires we just cut. And these are just a little too small for my normal wire strippers. So you can accomplish this with just the wire cutters by just barely cutting down and almost just making an indentation on the jacket. And then if you pull like that, now you'll see that the black part, the insulation is gone, and now we have an exposed wire right here. Now we're going to do the same thing on this one. All right, now that we have the jacket stripped off of both ends of the wire, I'm going to take our normally closed momentary push button switch, feed one part of the one side of the wire, I should say, through one of the solder lugs. I'm going to go ahead and bend it just so it stays in there. Then I'm going to take the other wire, feed it through the other solder lug. I'm going to go ahead and bend that one so it stays there. So now we're going to solder this switch in place. Now when soldering these wires onto the switch, I want to 
heat both the solder lug and the wire. So I want to hold the solder iron on both the wire and the solder lug. Just leave it there for a few seconds and then I'm going to introduce solder to where both of them meet. You can see it is melting. So now I'm going to do it to the other side once again. I'm going to hold the solder iron to both the wire and the solder lug and melt the solder. We now have a momentary push button switch installed in line with the batteries so now we don't have to take out the batteries if this toy locks up. Alright, now we can test the switch that we've just installed. So I'm going to turn this on. Uh, at level one. And when I press this button here it should turn off. And it has, so now we need to turn it back on. We can turn it off just by hitting that button. Turn it back on. So the switch works. And basically, instead of having to remove the batteries, we can just hit the switch if it ever locks up. Now that we have our switch installed, we can go ahead and start trying to find some bend points. I'm going to press a button. And as I press the button, I'm going to start touching the circuit board with my fingers. Now to hone in on which actual pads we're making those sounds, that's when I'm going to use the jeweler's screwdrivers. And basically, I'm going to hold these points to a few different pads in this little area right here to find out which ones we're actually making that bend. All right, now I'm going to use the jeweler's screwdrivers to pinpoint where these two bend points are uh, that I kind of found with my thumb and finger. And as I press on a button on the underside, now we hear that sure enough, when these two points right here are connected, we get a good glitch. Since we know that these two points right here make a good bend, what I'm going to do is mark it on my picture that we printed out earlier of the circuit board. Alright, so I'm going to label this first point A. I'm going to label the second point B. And what I'm going to go ahead and do to make finding other bends a little easier is I notice sometimes when I actually connect these two bend points that it'll start looping and uh, keep going for a while that'll be good to find other bend points because it'll just be in a constant loop. Now, this was one of the bend points. This is what I marked B. So I'm just going to quickly tap the soldering iron on the wire and the bend point and try and get the wire to solder onto that connection. Now as you can see here, I've barely got any solder on these wires and onto the bend points and the reason why is just because there's not a whole lot of room in there. Now then, this is where the hot glue gun is going to come in. So what I'm going to do is just literally place hot glue on each one of these solder connections. And I'm going to be pretty liberal with it. This will help keep the solder connections in place. Alright, now that we've got these two wires soldered to our bend points, I'm actually going to connect them to a toggle switch. So basically one side will get connected to one wire and the middle lug will get connected to the other. Sure enough, uh, after flipping the toggle switch and pressing a few buttons on the front, I've actually gotten the speak and read to just start spouting off a bunch of uh, random words and noises, and it's actually been going for a few minutes now. Which this is good, because now we can find other bend points without having to press buttons on the front. Alright, so while the speak and read is still in its... Uh, repetitive loop, uh, actually it's not even repetitive, it's just uh, continuously going. I'm going to poke around and prod and try and find some other bend points with the screwdrivers. 